Hello and welcome back. We've got the blue variant of the diesel rail car there, just uh, going into the second radius curve, and we're going to bring her smoothly into the station through the point work there, and we'll bring her gently to a stop just under the edge of the canopy. We'll have a great view there of the station clock. Now we've got the, the later variant there with the A7 head code on the right, and we'll just move off gently from the station in a moment, let the points open. Nice and smoothly out through the point work. She does have a, a slight buzz to her, this model. I think it's some vibration in the, in the plastic parts in the, in the bodywork, rather a number of them. Lovely shot there with a the coloured light signal, reflecting on the side of the models. We've got a great view there of my new factory building, R371, available in the very early 60s. And here we've got the model in its box. It's sold as a two-car set as R157 diesel rail car power coach and trailer unit. If you have a look at the insert picture there, you'll see the uh, model first showed up or a variation of it in 1958. And it was sold as uh, R157 for the uh, motor coach and um, 158 for the uh, trailer coach. Um, and it was sold like that through till around 1967, I think when it was withdrawn. And then uh, the blue variant we had on the layout earlier um, was R157C and that was available as a two-car set between uh, 1970 and 71, a surprisingly short period of time. And then this variation showed up in uh, 75. I think it was available through till 77. So it is a, a fairly tatty looking box. If we have a, have a swift look inside, we do have a, a price here. It's uh, 15 pounds. I, I didn't pay that for it. It was a, a little bit more than that. And it was, it was sold as a, as a non-runner at the time and um, it turned out to be just a track pin in the, in the uh, stuck in the motor preventing it from running. So it was a, a fairly good buy. So we'll just pop this open. Now I have got some bubble wrap in here because the uh, internal packaging has been damaged over the years, although quite, quite a neat bit of damage. We'll just uh, get rid of the internal packaging, not the packaging, but the, uh, the separate packaging I've put in there just to stop the models rolling around inside the box. And you see that the two polystyrene trays there have been broken off at the same point on each of them. Face guard seems to have had a, a fairly hard time. They, they get bent as they push back into the box. And I think this one had been in and out of the box quite a lot. When I, when I came across this, it was um, like this with an elastic band around it and a Dayglow star, say non-runner, 20 pounds. So I thought well, that was a reasonable price for this, thinking that there well, couldn't really be a great deal wrong with it, having looked over the model and uh, seeing it is in fairly good condition. So we've got these uh, instructions here, R157, 20th of May, 75 by the looks of it. So we've seen these instructions fairly recently. There's, a, there's slight variations to them, so we won't go over them in too much detail. So various ordering points for for uh, motors and chassis in, in use at the time. And it covers various aspects of the uh, model railway system. So we'll just uh, pop that to one side and have a, a swift look over, over the models. So we've got the uh, the two trays here and I said they've been damaged. It looks like they've been, the ends have snapped off in one go there, doesn't it? So luckily not too much not much damage to the, the models. We'll have a look at the, uh, the motor coach. So I think we looked at uh, a diesel rail car a short time ago on the insides. And I think the motor and to a large degree is, is an identical thing, albeit slightly newer, I think. Um, and it does have the lighting, directional lighting in here. We've got the, the A7 head code. So we're not gonna dismantle this one today, but um, if you'd like to see the insides of one of these diesel rail cars, have a look at one of the earlier videos. We'll just have a, have a look underneath here. See, we've got smooth wheels on this variation. Um, plastic gears. I don't think we've got Hornby's name on here, but we do have uh, built in Britain. Uh, we've got uh, plastic wheel sets here. So we've got um, the axle and wheels all molded as one. Um, they are fairly, fairly smooth running, but uh, the model's in, in fairly good condition. Uh, it seems to be one, one of these decals looks like it might have an air bubble underneath it. So I suppose it, it's susceptible to uh, damage if it uh, gets brushed too much. I think it's that one. I don't know whether you can quite see that. There's a lot of vibration from this model as well. In, in, if you hear that, there's a lot of movement in it. And the seating unit and the glazing units all move marginally. 
I think even this underframe detail here is marginally loose, so you do get some vibration when the model's running. But uh, as I say, it's in, in fairly pretty condition. So we'll pop that one down and have a, have a swift look at the, uh, the trailer coach. That was a bit rough. And again, it's in very similar condition. It's hardly had any, um, that's an awful noise, isn't it? Hardly had uh, any track time. And it's been uh, well looked after. I wonder whether it just stopped running one day and somebody put it in the box and sort of forgot about it. But uh, fairly pretty thing. I think we've got uh, Hornby, Hornby Railways just tucked away inside there. Let's see if we can get that uh, in focus. There we go, Hornby Railways, built in Britain. Again, we've got those plastic plastic wheels and axles all together. I think later variants of here had, had clip-in clip -in bogies. A very pretty thing. We've just opened points number nine there, the crossover. Away onto the passing route there, lovely front end shot of the model, and we'll snap the points closed behind them. And then we're going to work our way around to the uh, coloured light signals. And we're going to have a, a lovely shot in a moment as she passes underneath the gantries there. Lovely shot. And then if you keep your eye on the insert picture, you'll be able to see the coloured light signals change. Slight hesitation here on the uh, ramp for the operating mail coach. Nicely through there, and we'll snap those shut behind them. Now here we've got the uh, centre car for the diesel rail car unit, R334. Originally released back in 61 and stayed in production till 67 when the original diesel rail car was withdrawn. And then this was reintroduced after the diesel rail car came back in 75. This was uh, introduced the year, the year after in 76, so it's got that slightly later Hornby Railway style box. Fairly neat and tidy box. There's a, there's a slight tear to the end flap here. And there we have the, the model out of the box. You can see she has got quite a bit of wear to the lining, which is the only sort of let down for this, this model, really. Apart from that, she's in fairly tidy condition. I think it was such a shame they didn't get around to making a, a blue centre coach for the, uh, for the earlier version of the DMU, which came along in 70, 71. It would have been nice to have the the blue centre car. Let's have a look under here. We've got uh, built in Britain, Hornby Railways. And we do have the uh, the catalogue number just hiding under there. Let's see if we can get that in focus for you. R334 there. Plastic axles and wheels all moulded as one. Well. Clip fit bogies. That will uh, cut down the cost of production a little bit. Although I do think it does make them a little bit more wobbly with the plastic bogies. But uh, all in all, it's fairly tidy apart from the the slight loss in lining down both sides. And there she is, she's just come underneath the uh, elevated section there. I'm gonna pass the station. I'm gonna have a, a slight hesitation here on this uh, diamond crossing, just at the end of the platform there. And uh, away she goes into the third radius curve. If you've noticed, I've uh, completely cleared the layout. There's no uh, other locomotives or rolling stock other than these two diesel rail cars. In the past days, I've been doing a fair bit of maintenance, track cleaning and some hoovering on the layout. It's amazing how much dust settles between the track work and sleepers. So hopefully that's uh, all to the good and we'll have a little bit smoother running. But uh, I think this model probably falls in that sort of unloved period in the, in the Hornby Railway's history. Not enough detail, newer models coming along and the, the uh, definitely people wanting uh, better looking models and newer technology. This one has its technologies dating right back into the uh, late 50s. They say the illuminator head code uh, will light up, but you do need to run it terribly quickly. But I think that's probably it for this week. Thanks again for watching. It's hugely appreciated. Goodbye now.